my name is Adam Gordon, entertainer here at IT Pro TV, back with our How to Use Zoom serial. In this exciting episode, we're we'll gonna take a look at my favorite six Zoom security tips, trying to keep you safe and show you how to use Zoom effectively. Now, whether you are a Zoom educator, a teacher trying to teach students and engage them on this platform, or just a normal information worker, a business user, who's been asked to work remotely, as we all are during these days, and you're using Zoom, we've got some really cool security tips for it. It's gonna help you to use it more effectively, prevent all those strangers from jumping into your meetings, what we call Zoom bombing, and keep those students and your fellow coworkers safe. All right, so we're starting in the desktop app, and we have the ability to launch a brand new meeting right from here, or to schedule a meeting. Let's just make sure you could see that nice and clear as we're talking. And we can do either one. We're going to examine both with regards to some of the initial tips. I'm going to break the tips into two blocks, three that are going to be focused on setting up the meeting, and then three that are focused on once the meeting actually begins. So two groups of three combined together to keep us safe and secure while we're using the Zoom platform to teach as well as to meet. Now, I've already got two meetings scheduled. You'll see them off to the right there at the edge of the screen. We're gonna launch a meeting in a couple of minutes, but first, let's look at creating a brand new meeting. So I'm gonna just go back out here and click on the new meeting element. And when we do this, we launch a meeting immediately. That's me, my little profile picture there. Join with computer audio. Let me just get that to come up full screen. It was just truncated. And that takes us into a meeting, like a quick start to get a meeting going right away. I don't have any participants invited yet, but you'll notice I can manage participants and begin to invite them down below. And you'll notice that Zoom has added in one of their recent updates, a security button to the left of manage participants right there. It goes away when we hover for more than a couple of seconds without clicking. And that's gonna give us access to some of the features and tips that we're gonna talk about once the meeting begins. But before we get into that, what we're gonna to wanna to do is just take a look at how to schedule a meeting and look at some of those tips that help us up front. So I'm gonna schedule a meeting and I'm gonna click there. We get our little schedule meeting form and we can name our meeting, set a date and a time, all that's important. But the first of my six security tips is gonna be under meeting ID right here as we look, the default now is generate automatically. And that means you'll get a randomized meeting ID, which is gonna be much harder for somebody who's looking to jump into your meeting and cause havoc and perhaps do things they're not supposed to do and be an uninvited nuisance or guest. It's gonna make it very difficult for them to get in and to do anything. So we wanna make sure we're aware of that and focus on that. We do have the option to use our PMI, our personal meeting ID, but we wanna use generate automatically so that meeting ID is randomized every time. Security tip number one. Security tip number two, right, or safety tip number two. Password, require meeting password. Enabling that auto-generates, again, randomly every time a numeric password string. Now, it is six characters by default, but this can actually go out up to 10 characters if you want to add a few to be able to make that a little bit harder for people to guess and or to figure out and to use. So that's security and safety tip number two. Always use that password, require it, and have that set for every meeting, okay? So that's two out of three. Our third one, let me just zoom back out here for just a second. Gonna go to advanced options right down below at the bottom of our setup meeting form. And you'll see I've already selected it, which is enable waiting room. And that's our waiting room option where users are gonna be asked to congregate in a virtual lobby before the meeting actually starts, allowing us to control who is there and admit them into the meeting based on us, meaning the host or the organizer, doing a quick additional manual safety check to see who they are, knowing they're not strangers, hopefully looking to do harm and disrupt our meeting. So safety tip, security tip number three, but that's kind of 3A, because I'm gonna break three into two parts, 3A and 3B. We'll give you a bonus one, I'll give you an extra one, right? Which is also to only allow authenticated users to join uh, a meeting and sign into Zoom. You can see that is selected there as well. And those two together allow us to ensure that we control users waiting to join our meeting and we allow them as the host to manually onboard and we check who they are by seeing their name and hopefully recognize them, avoiding letting in the guests that don't belong there, the uninvited, 
And then also only authenticated users can join. That means users that are gonna join the meeting must use and sign in with the email that the invitation was sent to in order to be allowed in. And again, an extra added safety and security precaution Filtering out strangers and people that don't belong that are randomly attempting to get into our meetings is the goal. And all these steps together are gonna to overlap each other, mutually reinforce all those capabilities so that we can hopefully catch all those people that don't belong there. All right, so we've got our first set of safety and security tips taken care of as we're scheduling and setting up our meeting. Remember where they are, make sure to enable all of them so that they all work together. I'm gonna to just take us back out. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cancel out of this request to schedule the meeting, so we already have to schedule. Now, when we launch our meeting, we'll see our next set of steps, our next set of tips that we can focus on. And we were already in there as a preview, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start one of the scheduled meetings. So I'm gonna do that just over here by clicking Start. And when I do that, the meeting, as you saw just a moment ago, will come up, we'll just join with our audio. And so now we're in. And let's look at our second set of steps. And so down here where the security button is, as I already indicated, I'm gonna click, we're gonna get a nice little pop-up list. And this is where our second set of tips and security measures are gonna be located. You'll notice that the meeting room is enabled. So that means I force those users in as we already indicated. But notice that once the meeting begins and I've onboarded and entered everybody, I can lock the meeting. This is safety and security tip number four. I can lock the meeting, and when I do that, it comes up on the screen and says, hey, you've locked the meeting, no one else can join. This prevents latecomers from getting in, but it also prevents random strangers from showing up and jumping into the meeting after it's begun. Again, Zoom bombing and trying to disrupt the meeting. Now I can unlock the meeting if somebody messages us and says, hey, Adam, let me in, I can't get in, no problem. I can just come back here, I can unlock it, and it's unlocked, new, new people can be onboarded, and then I can lock it again when we're done. So I wanna take note of that, that's number four. Number five allows us to focus on and control whether participants can screen share and or can rename themselves. And you could see there, as well as chat, I would say all three of those are kind of all parts of number five, five A, B, and C, if you will. And by allowing all these things, we do give users maximum, or students, either way, maximum flexibility to learn, interact, collaborate, and participate. But we run the risk of strangers potentially taking over the meeting, showing inappropriate content if we let users share their screen, saying and processing inappropriate things in chat, and hiding themselves by renaming themselves so they look like an authorized user when in fact they're not. So we may want to disassociate those options by simply unchecking them. Now the only thing I don't like is that every time I uncheck one, the interface goes away, I have to go back in to enable them, but that's not a big deal or select them. But I would potentially want to think about unselecting all or at least one or more of them as safety tip, security tip number five. Now, safety or security tip number six, our last one. This happens and is available once the meeting begins. Got our meeting up and running, no participants yet, but that's okay. We are gonna go to our manage participants area because that's where we're gonna expose our last feature that's gonna give us safety. And when I click manage participants, we're gonna come over here and we'll see I'm the only one currently in there on the participant list. We'll see others normally when we have a meeting. We're gonna come all the way down to the right, and it's kind of hard to see because it's gray and it's very light, but just to the right of those buttons, invite, mute all, unmute all, there's a little gray button or a little gray box with three buttons running horizontally. We call it an ellipsis. When you click there, we're gonna get a pop-up list, and again, we can lock the meeting, enable the meeting room, all that stuff, right? Uh, and I'm gonna give you a twofer here as well. So although we're calling this safety and security tip number six, I'm gonna give you a 6A and 6B. We can play enter or exit chime. This is important. People often overlook this and don't think about this. If you select that, what's gonna happen is every time somebody enters the meeting, we're gonna get a chime. Now it is a little annoying, I grant you. But what's gonna happen is no guests can anonymously join and sneak in without us knowing they're there. If you have one of these very large meetings with a large number of participants, you lose track of people as they onboard and join. People can sneak in without you knowing they're there. This forces a chime to appear and to be executed. So you hear it every time someone joins. 
giving you an indicator as the host that somebody has joined and therefore making sure you know to look to see whether or not they belong there. Very important, again, to eliminate the guest, the anonymous, the surreptitious bad actor looking to get in and try to do harm in the meeting. And then mute participants on entry. Again, people often overlook this one. That forces all participants to come in muted and takes away control from them to unmute giving control back to the host, whoever's running the meeting. Again, as a teacher, as a meeting organizer, this is super critical for you. You're the only one who can unmute those participants. If a guest shows up and tries to start shouting things inappropriate or whatever, or take over the meeting, all these things will prevent them. They can watch, they can listen, but they can't do anything because they can't speak. You'll know they're there. They can't share their screen. They can't rename themselves. Any of those things and all those things together are gonna be very powerful. And so hopefully all these security tips about how to safely use Zoom are going to help you to run more safe, more secure, more effective classroom sessions as educators, more effective, safe and secure meetings as meeting uh, organizers, whatever the case may be. But it's really important for you to take advantage of these tips. I'll be back with more Zoom episodes shortly. But until I see you doing those episodes and until I come back with them, happy Zooming. See you soon. Check out the playlist for more videos on how to use Zoom and be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. I'm Adam Gordon and thanks for watching.